Hi, and welcome to Two Tired Teachers. Today we're going to be talking to you about simple solar for part-timers. And it has to be simple so I understand it. We are part-timers. Now we're not necessarily your usual part-timers. This year we'll be gone for about a quarter of the year <laughs> with three month long trips. But that's not the, I mean we do take those, you know, sure. three or four sure, night sure, trips sure. here and there <laughs> in between those. Um, but we have all the solar we need. Now, if, you, if you're like me, I love watching the channels of the people who do this full time. And I'll be honest, I've watched a lot of people with their solar installs and their solar installs have cost more than we paid for the RV. <laughs> We're not willing to do that. No. And so what we have is actually two separate things that work in combination to give us the power we need. The first is a solar suitcase. And we use that solar suitcase to charge our house battery. Your house battery is going to be charging, providing power for your uh, power jack, your yes. awning, your slide, lights, smoke detectors, uh, vents, those fans. Yes. And so stuff that you know, runs off of DC power that's built into your um, RV. So we have a dedicated solar suitcase charges our house battery. It comes with a charge controller. Now, I tried to learn all I could about solar before we did this, before we changed to the smaller RV. And here's what I understand. There are a lot of components that have to work together. If they're out of balance, then you're kind of wasting your money, yes. essentially. They're the solar panels that charge the batteries. But between there, there is a charge controller that regulates not letting your batteries charge too fast or, or anyway. So there's a charge controller and then to get the power to your fan, you need an inverter. What I really wanted when we were changing to the smaller RV was one of these standalone uh, yes. boxes and I'll say the name of the one I was going to get. Now there are tons of them out there. But and we don't recommend we're not endorsing not any of them but it was a uh kodiak and they had sold out of the first version and hadn't come out with the second version right at the time we needed it these boxes these standalone and they're either called power packs or solar generators something like that they come with the battery the charge controller and the inverter and a already Plug, so well, much. some of them with 30 amp plugs already in one container. So then you just plug the solar panels, and a lot of times the solar, the solar panels and cables are going to be sold separately. But you plug them in, charge this battery, and then that battery provides your power. Yes. And that's basically what we have. But a friend of mine just said, Well, Sharon, I can build something that will work like that. And that's really what we have. Uh, he got us a 100 amp hour lithium battery, uh, some solar panels, a charge controller, inverter, and, and put a solar panel on top of the RV. Which we really like having. But the thing that uh, what we do is I, uh, in order to access that power, then we store that, that the, the battery and the inverter and all of that stuff, so essentially your, your box that this stuff comes in, is stored in our pass-through storage. I made a small hole, <laughs> drilled a small hole, to get a power strip plugged into that yes. so that when we turn it on, we have that power strip, we have another power strip for our phones and tablets up near our bed. We ran an extension cord to the other end of our RV where we plug in cameras, computers, watches, things like that. We can even watch TV, DVDs. Yes and so with our setup having two kind of separate things one for the house battery and then one for charging everything we want to charge and stuff like that it's worked well for us was it cheap no was it twenty thousand dollars no, no. <laughs> <laughs> your big expense is going to be the battery but you can find these kits and if you are looking for solar my suggestion would be go with 
overestimate what you think you may want so that you have that backup power. Yes. Because if the battery's too small, the way Sharon explained it to me once, you could have 10 solar panels, but that the battery will not take more power than it can hold. Exactly. And so kind of look at those, watch videos about different people who have these standalone components. We're not saying this is right for everybody, but like she said, we took a three week long trip Natchez Trace, we've taken and and Smoky Mountains. Yes, we took a month long trip to South, South Dakota, Dakota, a month long trip to Utah. We're currently on a month long trip in the mountains of New Mexico, escaping Texas heat, and we're planning a month long trip going back through the um, <laughs> Natchez Trace, Natchez Trace, and the uh, Ozark Mountains yeah. uh, in the fall. So, on these month long trips. We will run a generator no more than a total of maybe four or five hours. Uh, because Depending we have. Depending on if it's raining the whole time, we'll have to run a generator. But our average so far on these trips, the solar that we have, which um, the lithium battery is going to be, if you get a 100 amp hour lithium battery, you're looking at around $1,000. So it's not cheap. These standalone kits, that's going to be the big expense. Yes. Um, the solar suitcase, and I'll just go on and say we have a Renogy that came with a case, a carrying case, and I really like that. I have a quick connect to our uh, house batteries. You get those. The one I, I got, and the reason I got it and I liked it is because you said it. You can either go for the deep cell batteries that come standard, or you can go all the way up to lithium house battery. Uh, but I think it was like $250, and if I were just starting with solar... Personally, I would get a solar suitcase that has that flexibility. So if you want to change out and get the more expensive batteries, whatever you want to do, and a little generator, and then decide what you want for that charging station. The point of this is you don't have to have an integrated solar system, and that's set up. That's what a lot of these people have. If they're doing this full time, it might be worth doing that. And But I literally have seen people spending lots of money on these and we want to let you know you can have some solar and you don't have to spend that much. Beware that if you buy a new RV it may say solar ready. That means not a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> you need to find out what that means for yes. your uh, for your RV. It doesn't mean you just buy a solar panel plug it in and you're ready. Yeah. Uh, in most <laughs> cases they may be changing that soon but we love having solar. Oh, we yeah. love having that power available. It's not about how much the gas costs. It's not about, but mm -mm. it's we put solar panels out and then we've got power, and yeah. it's just really kind of it's overcast today, and yet we're still drawing. We're still drawing in basically as much power as we're using. Uh, if it stays overcast and cloudy for several days, you know, once we get to about three days of overcast, yeah, we'll have to break out the generator, charge everything back up. But we love having the solar, and like we said, we don't have an integrated system. We're not doing this full time, but we've got the power we need. Yes, we so do. we just wanted to share that with you and let you know, watching those videos of those people having those huge installs, yeah, that's kind of neat, but not in my budget. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Two, Two Tired, tired teachers. teachers.